Hello everyone, good morning. It is another Facebook Live. We are counting down to the kickoff of our holiday and celebration catalogs. We'll get to that in a second. Today we are making a really adorable little box and this is gonna be so super easy. This might be your go-to box. It is a cute little pillow box. We're gonna be making this in just a minute. I'm gonna show you everything you need to do to make that cute little box. Um, before we get into our box, while we're waiting for everybody to jump on, let's go over everything that's going on. The Designer Series Paper Sale, you guys have heard me talk about this all month. It's an incredible sale. You can save 15% on nine different DSPs from our annual catalog. This sale ends August 2nd. So we're coming up to the end of this sale. We're coming up to the very last day. So if you haven't taken advantage of this sale and gotten some of your favorite DSPs, make sure you get those before they're gone. All right, I have my paper share available for ordering right now. Invoices went out this morning, so if you have already RSVP'd for the paper share, you should have gotten an invoice. If you did not, please contact me so I can make sure that um, you, you're on my list, that everything's everything's good. But you can still get my paper share from the mini catalog. Let me pull out the mini catalog. So the paper share includes DSPs from nine different packages from the mini catalog. They are gorgeous, gorgeous papers. It's $42. You get over 60 pieces of DSP and um, it ships to you for free. So it is a great deal. If you love DSP, if you want to, to get it all, but you don't want to pay the high price to get it all, get my paper share um, sampler because that is my paper share, my paper share share, because that is the best way to do it. All right. Finally, our August, I was going to say October, but let's not jump ahead. Our August paper pumpkin is going to be the Hope Box. It is designed by Shelly Gardner. She is our Stampin' Up! co-founder. She is, her style is so much fun. I love it. So this box I am super looking forward to. You only have to August 10th to sign up. And you guys, that is coming up quicker than we think. It's already going to be August. So if you want this kit, make sure you sign up by August 10th. I think it's going to be a fantastic kit. Don't miss this kit. All right, finally, before we get into our project, yesterday on my blog, I released my paper share, or not my paper share, my card crate information for August. August card crate is going to be the hand pen petals um, bundle. It is a beautiful bundle. I kind of put off getting this one because I was like, oh, I don't need another floral set, but I, sh I shouldn't have waited. This is one of the best bundles in the annual catalog, I think, and the cards are simply gorgeous so if you want that card crate make sure you head to my blog i think i will make sure to add a a link in my um, video description i don't think i did that but i will make sure to add one in my video description um, otherwise you can just head to my blog it was posted yesterday so you can just um head there now the project we're going to do today will be posted later today so you can look for that on my blog too all right the mini catalog and the celebration catalog these both launch august 3rd if you want these products before august 3rd you can join my team you can put products from the mini catalog in your starter kit and then once you're demonstrating you're going to earn a discount and you can earn these with your discount for free all right so let's get to our project today. i told you guys we were going to make this little pillow box so we're actually making another cherry cobbler one i did one in smoky slate as well and you can see how adorable they are and they just open up like this. And I just have some little candies in this one. This one I just have some little Hershey bars. Um, and this one I have some little Reese's peanut butter cups in this one. So the candy, you guys, you can get those in any store, any grocery store. This is the bag that I have. So it has like a fun variety of candy. So I'm trying to use a lot of it before I hand the bag over to my kids. Mm. I think they keep coming in here and sneaking pieces though. But the pillow box is so cute and there's so much you can do with it. This is really just the tip of the iceberg of how amazing this pillow box die is. So before we get to the actual die cutting of the pillow box, we're going to, we're going to stamp all of our images and color them so that we can get that out of the way and then die cut everything all at once. So we're gonna start with our stamping for these. So I'm gonna move these out of the way. So you can, um, so we can do our stamping. So I have just a couple scrap pieces of white hair and we're gonna stamp our images in Memento. Now these images come from, let me show you this little stamp set, it is so cute. They come from this stamp set, the sweet little stocking stamp set. We're gonna use this, the smallest stocking and then the two presents. And this comes in a bundle so you can get this bundled. You can save 10%. 
You can put this in your starter kit if you want. So this is a great, great bundle for um, for Christmas. And I just, I love these little critters and the greetings are super cute too. So this is what we're using to stamp all of our images with. So let's start with that. We do have a little bit of coloring with our Stampin' Blends and it didn't occur to me to, oh, that's way low. Let me grab another piece of weight because that's gonna die cut funny. I don't even remember what I was saying now. <laughs> it didn't occur to me to, to color any of these in advance, so it might take us a, a few minutes to color these, but the coloring is actually pretty easy, so I think we'll be okay. So we need one stocking and one of each of those little gifts. I have the little tall gift and the little striped gift here. Okay, so those are all in Memento because we are going to be um, coloring those with our Stampin' Blend. So I'm using three colors of Stampin' Blends. I have Mossy Meadow, Cherry Cobbler, Smoky Slate, and then I also have our Color Lifter here. Is that what it's called? <laughs> the Color Lifter. I can never for the life of me remember what that's called. We're going to start with our stocking. We're going to start with our Cherry Cobbler. I'm going to start with my Dark. How you color with blends really is a preference thing. You can start with the light. You can start with the dark. Um, I always start with the dark, but you can really do it either way. Now for the dark, I'm just going to kind of outline the the little stocking part down here, not the cuff or the heel or the toe, just the actual stocking part. I'm just kind of outlining that part with the dark. Just adding a little bit here. And then I'm going to go in with my light. And I'm just going to go in circular motions and just kind of blend that out to the middle because I want the kind of the center of the stocking to be the lightest part. So I'm going to just work my way into the middle using circular motions to blend out that dark. And eventually we'll get to the middle. That'll be the, the lightest part. And then if you need to blend out any of those other dark lines still, you can just keep going over with circular motions. And then if you feel that it needs to be just a little darker, you can go back in with your dark under the, the cuff here. Just around those little elements there. And that is, that's it. It's going to dry beautifully. The light, the inside will be a little bit or the middle, not the inside. The middle will be a little bit lighter than the outside. All right, for our little gift here, we'll come back to our stocking in a minute. I want that red to kind of dry before we go in with our smoky slate. I'm gonna use Mossy Meadow. Now this DSP that we're using, we'll talk about that in a minute, but that's actually Garden Green. We don't have a Garden Green um, Stampin' Blend, so I'm gonna use Mossy Meadow, which is pretty close to to garden green I think especially with the Stampin' Blends because you can really blend them into garden green. So with the darker one I am just going to I'm going to start right here under the bow and I'm just going on either end. I'm going to skip a line and really just go on either end. So let's see skipping a line right here. Skip a line. So we're making kind of green and white striped um, wrapping paper. So we're going to skip a line right here. So that's pretty much, that's all I'm going to add with my dark. You can see very, very little. Then I'm going to come in with my, my light mossy meadow, and I'm just going to pull that into the, into the middle there. So again, the middle is going to be the dark, the lighter area. Pull that in and pull this one in. All right. We're almost to the end. There we are. So isn't that cute? You have your own little custom green um, wrapping paper. Now while we have our Mossy Meadow markers out, we're going to go ahead and do this bow up here. And I'm going to kind of do it the same way, um, except around the bow, just right here where it's going to be gathered, it's going to be darker. And then the right under the bow here, and then the very bottom here. And that's all I'm going to do with my dark. I'll go in with my light, again, kind of drag that together. These are pretty small areas, so you really don't have to worry about blending too much. And if you don't want to blend at all, maybe you're making a lot of these you can really just color them with the blends and that they'll be beautiful. You don't have to do a lot of blending. All right, there we go. So that's all of with our Mossy Meadow. We're actually gonna set this aside and we'll go back to our Cherry Cobbler. We'll finish up our, our gift here. So with our dark Cherry Cobbler, I'm just gonna go around that ribbon. It will be a little bit darker where that ribbon is overlapping it. So I'll just turn my cardstock. There we go. And then with my light, I'll just come in and just blend that out to the side. So this time the sides are going to be a little bit lighter. 
But again, you can color these however you want. Now, I have to admit that Cherry Cobbler is not a color that I really gravitate towards. It's not one of my go-to colors, but for Christmas, I think it's a great Christmas red. Um, but really, the rest of the year, I don't really gravitate toward Cherry Cobbler a lot. It's such a deep, rich red, um, and I'm more of a bright girl, so I don't use it a whole lot. All right, for our little bow here, we're going to do it the same way we did our Mossy Meadow bow. We're just going to do the little edges there, the top and the bottom with our dark, and then we're just going to pull everything together. All right. And I'm not doing too much blending. Those um, darker lines on those little bows will, will really shine. All right. Finally, we're going to come in with our Smoky Slate, and I'm only going to use my Smoky Slate light. So, and we're just going to, we're going to finish up the little cuff here. So where the, the little stitch lines are, I'm going to go over with my Smoky Slate and then just kind of around the top just a little bit. And the same thing on the heel and the toe. And just around. And then once we, so once we have all that shaded in, I'm going to come in with my white or my clear color lifter. And that's when I'm going to go in circular motions and blend those colors out. That's going to just soften that smoky slate. It's going to leave it more looking like it's a shadow or a highlight more than it's colored. So you can keep going over it. If you still feel that it's too harsh after it's completely dry, you can go over it again with your color lifter. You may need to just kind of let it dry and see what it looks like before you decide if you need to go back over it again. And the same thing down here on the toe. Or this is the heel, hello. Whew. All right, so that's it. We're gonna set that aside. We're gonna just come in real quick with our present and just along the white parts, I'm just gonna add just a little touch of Smoky Slate and I'll do the same thing. I'll just pull that color out with my color lifter and that's just gonna give it kind of like a, just like a little shadowy shine. It's not going to turn the paper gray by any means, but it's just going to give it a little bit of shadow. All right, that is it with our coloring. See, quick and easy, right? I'll put these markers off to the side. Now, before we die cut, I do want to just stamp our greeting real quick. I'm going to do that in Garden Green ink. And let me show you the greeting. This is from another new set in the in the mini catalog, in the upcoming mini catalog. All we're using is this little tiny Mary right here. But this is the Christmas to Remember stamp set. And this has so many amazing Christmas greetings. I am loving this one. So grab that one. So let me grab our greeting and we're going to just cut this out. So I'm not looking for perfection here. I'm just looking to get it on the paper and we're going to trim that out. All right. So that is all of our stamping and inking. Let me grab my scissors and just chop that off right away. All right. Move my inks out of the way and let's pull in our dies. So I'm going to pull out my little stocking dies for these. So I have my little gifts here. Here's one more. I love these dies, especially this, this big label here. This is a year round die. So make sure you grab that. It is a good die set. Okay. I have some post-it tape just to hold all my dies in place. So we don't have to worry about them shifting in the, in the machine. So just line them up and just stick that down. And one more. And then we're going to pull in our die cutting machine and do all of our die cutting, including our pillow box. Okay, so let me move this out of the way. Move our, our little pieces out of the way. I'm going to pull in my, my big cut and emboss machine for this one because um, the pillow box die will only fit in this one. You're going to need the big one for this. Now, for our pillow box die, I just have half a sheet of um, cherry cobbler. It's not going to take that whole sheet. It's just easier for me to cut on half a sheet and I have those ready to go than um, die cutting it or cutting it down even further. So these are our pillow box dies. I didn't even show you that. My light is like completely glaring on them. Um, I love these. There's a fun label in them. And I sh we use this label on the sheep box we made on Monday. And there's lots of little details. This is a little tag that coordinates with that little flap on the on the pillow box dies and there's other little details. There's a tag, some more details down here. So just a really great um, box die set. And for, you know, sometimes when we have to make so many boxes, it's, it really helps to have a die set that does it all. All right, I'm gonna try to get everything on here in one pass. So I'm moving my pillow box all the way down to the bottom of my cardstock, making sure that it stays on the cutting plate. And I think, 
I think we're good. It's going to be close, but I think we can do it. I'm going to pull this up just a smidge. Okay. So top plate on top, I have my plate number one, two, and then two cutting plates, of course, with my cardstock in the middle. Now the um, pillow box die is going to actually score our cardstock too, which is fantastic. All right, let me move this out of the way. Put that off to the side. And we'll get all of our little pieces out. There's our little gift. Here's another gift and our stocking. And here is our pillow box. Move all of that out of the way. So I don't know if the camera's going to pick it up, but you can. there are some score lines on here. So I'm just going to grab my bone folder. And I'm just going to kind of gently fold on those score lines. I'm not going to burnish down too much because we're going to have to curve these a little bit. So we're really not going to be able to really burnish them too much. But there is score lines where they curve. And so if you just take your, your fingers and just kind of pinch them, that will really help along the, the process once it's time to put them together. Just go through. It doesn't take a long time. Just kind of pinch them. You can see it's already kind of forming that, that beautiful pillow box shape. All right. Now to assemble this, I'm going to use some tear tape just because it's fast. We don't have to wait for drying time. So with my, with my box laying like this with the little scallopy lid over here, so it's going to go together like this. I'm actually going to put a piece of tear and tape on each of these little tabs on the one farthest from that little scallopy layer. Okay, let me peel those off. Now the first couple that you make, you might, it might be a little bit weird, but once you get to making a bunch of them, they'll go right together. So all we're doing is just kind of overlapping these, making sure the one with adhesive is on top. And you just wanna make sure that they just kinda nestle in this little point right here i think is the the hardest point you just kind of nestle that that little piece in just kind of give it a little pinch and just make sure those little score lines are nice and clean and there you go that's one side perfectly you can do this with liquid glue um you might just have to hold it for a second just to make sure that it adheres this is one of the times where i really love our tear and tape or even our stamp and seal plus would be Great for this too. And the second one, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to kind of overlap it and then just kind of pinch that little corner and give it a good press. And that is, that's your pillow box. Isn't that cute? This will just fold right over just like that. Put your tape away and that, but that's it. Isn't that so fun? No trimming on our part, just running it through the die cut. We have this great little pillow box. So I'm going to stop stuff. Just a couple more little Reese's in there. And that's our little pillow box. Now to hold it closed, you could add a piece of Velcro. You can use a little magnet closure. I'm going to just use some DSP. This is from our Peaceful Petals designer series paper. This is a celebration option that's coming on August 3rd. You can see all these amazing patterns. That I'm, I love this DSP. It's so just kind of neutral and very Christmassy, very, um, I almost want to say like lumberjacky, but <laughs> almost like lumberjack. These prints right here would be great with that well-suited, um, bundle. You can make really cute little masculine shirts with these, but I just, I love this DSP. You can earn this free during celebration with a $50 purchase. So I just have my, my DSP here and I'm just going to use a little piece of tear and tape. The DSP is one and a half by five and a half. This one I think is actually six, but um, you want to make it five and a half. I think it actually fits better. So I just put a piece of tear and tape, one on the front and one on the back. And when we overlap those, they'll, my word, they'll just kind of overlap and just make sure everything is adhered down nicely. I'm going to peel this off, making sure I don't adhere it to my table. And I want this like, snowflakey side up and you'll see I use two different patterns on here I use the the little plaid trees on this one and then just the garden green polka dot on this one so we're going to wrap it around so the one with adhesive on the front side I'm going to wrap around first and then finish with the adhesive on the back so that gives us a nice clean finish and our belly band will slide on and off and it'll keep our little pillow box nice and closed all right all that's left to do is to finish assembling this. 
So I'm actually going to stick a little bit of liquid glue on the back of my stocking here. And we're just going to kind of stick our little presents in there. So this one will fit kind of at an angle just like that. A little bit more glue behind there. And this one will get tucked in just like that. So we're gonna set this aside just for a second to dry. I'm gonna turn it upside down just so it can dry. And I'm just gonna cut out my little merry greeting. You can use a paper trimmer. I'm just using my scissors for this. Just go around the greeting nice and tight. And we're gonna stick this on our, on our stocking, just off to the corner here. Just a little bit of glue on the side. And this will just overlap just like that. There's our little stocking, isn't he cute? And some dimensionals. I'm gonna put dimensionals right onto my belly band just so I know nothing is gonna hang off. And this goes right onto our belly band, just like that. And that's it, you guys. You can always dress it up more. You can add some ribbon. You can um, add some other embellishments. I did go over the bows with a little bit of Wink of Stella if you wanted to add a little bit of extra shimmer. But that is it. Isn't that super cute? These are just such simple go-to boxes. If you have to make a ton of them, this is going to be a great one to do. You can just stamp all your images, sit down and color, and then just die cut and assemble all of those pillow boxes. Super easy, really cute, really fun. All right, guys, I have one more video to share with you guys this week, one more Facebook Live, and we're going to do Halloween on Friday. So join me 10 a.m. Friday morning. We're going to do Halloween, and I'm going to show you a quick sneak peek of what we're going to make on Friday. That's it. Oh, super cute. I'm, I'm loving that project so much. So make sure you join us or join me Friday, 10 a.m. Mountain Time, and um, we'll jump into Halloween. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining me, and I will see you guys Friday. Bye.